What's going on everyone? It's Mr. West. I hope we're all well. So welcome back to another in the ultimate video test series. And this time is for the new mobile G3. And this has been around since last year, so it's not a new handset, but it has only just become available in the UK, both from new mobile directly and also at amazon.co.uk. Costs around 200 pounds. And that is reflected in some of the specification for the phone, which I'll run through in a moment. As with all Ultimate Video Test videos, the full camera specifications will be left down in the description, so you can take a look at those in your own time. And I'll just run through some of the more high-level features of the camera throughout the video to give you a snapshot of what's available. So this front-facing camera is a 13-megapixel fixed-focus camera. It records video at a maximum of 720p, and as you might have seen already, it doesn't offer any stabilization at all. And I've got to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised at the actual quality of the video from the front facing camera, even though it's only 720p. Now, it would be nice to have electronic image stabilization, but some compromises have to be made at this price point, and that is one of them. Now, the front facing camera doesn't benefit from anything like HDR, but it does automatically control exposure on the fly. Now one good thing is, is that if you're looking at the clouds behind me in the sky, some of the phones that I've tested would have blown that out by now, but we get a nice kind of contrasty look behind us there, which is quite pleasing to the eye. I am very, very surprised. If you move them just behind me here, and this gap in the trees there, there is some sun behind there, so it's blown up the sky if we just move around and the transition to the blue sky and clouds behind us is handled really well. Slight jittery movement. We've got a couple of drop frames there, but on the whole, handled pretty well. Now, although we don't have any image stabilization, let's see how the phone handles some faster movement with a spirited jog. So that's how things look without any stabilization whatsoever. But again, pleasantly surprised with how it handles changing in exposure and scenery. But again, for actual video quality and so much of detail and the way it handles the overall look of the image, it isn't actually that bad. Now, in addition to the normal camera mode, you get these scene modes as well. So this is the monochrome mode. It kind of gives it a more classy noir look but the exposure and detail remains the same so we're still getting the gaps in the clouds behind which is cool and then we've got granddad's favorite which is sepia which kind of gives everything a burnt orange look so we've got this rather frightening looking negative effect which makes it look like i've got a doctor's coat on and at any moment now, some dastardly fox is going to jump out from this darkness behind me. And my ears are blue. So then we've got this posturize option. Why on earth anyone would use this? I don't know. It looks like I've fallen in mud. And it kind of is a bit jarry the way it applies the effect. So the effect's there. If you want to posturize your image and then we've got this aqua mode which looks more like someone's dropped ad blue or blue rinse all over the picture so then we've got this blackboard effect which in this scenario appears to be about as much use as waterproof bread so that is that and we've got this fresh look so this has got a kind of sinner like effect to it it's got like a slight vignette around the edges of the image. But I do quite like this. The, the actual tone and look of that is very cinematic-like. Now we've then got movie. So this seems to be very similar to the one we've just looked at. It's very subtle, but it tends to make colors very rich and warm. 
face has taken on an orange glow. Uh, this is calm. You can see this is just a slight step down from the, the fresh look that we had. So this effect is called memory and adds a kind of like teal and orange, but much more subdued. So this one's called gorgeous. And again, it's quite a subtle effect. These are, as, as I say, some of them are quite throwaway. Possibly the best one I've seen so far is the fresh one, which does look quite nice and also the noir and sepia. Okay, so the last but one is called elegant. And again, this is very much like the fresh and kind of cinema look. I've noticed using these effects, it does add some more drop frames because obviously it's adding some process into the image. And, and finally, this one is named cool. And it's the final picture mode that is available from these picture effects. So that is all of the color modes that are available. Now you have got a white balance option in the settings, but obviously that is fixed to whatever option that you've got. It doesn't actually adjust as you go. And as I said, this is the only picture resolution available, which I think is worth using as well. You've also got VGA, but I really can't see anyone using that. And as you may have guessed, this does record sound in mono only. So in my previous test and just testing out the phone when I first had it, it is only recording in mono sound. And the sound itself isn't actually that bad. It could be more dynamic, but again, for £200, I'm not going to be too critical of that. You can hear what's going on and that is what matters. So that is everything from the front facing camera. So switching over to the rear camera, I'll show you what that is all about. Okay, so this is the, the main rear camera. This is also a 13 megapixel camera. There is also an additional five megapixel camera, which is used for just still photography, and it's used for depth sensing and portrait shots. Now, as you can see in this mode also, there is no electronic or optical image stabilization on the rear camera. Now, the main cameras record up to a maximum of 1080p at 30 frames per second, so there's no 60 fps option now previous versions of this phone back when it was first released did have 4k at 30 frames per second but after a bit of research it was found that there were some issues with the video recording at 4k so new pushed out a update to these phones and disabled that so we now stuck at 1080p so we'll just check exposure now looking at the trees behind us so there is some sun just trying to poke through there so it does do a good job of handling a changing exposure. Again, there's no HDR from the main camera on the rear either when recording in video mode. Uh, before we look at autofocus and detail, we'll just show you how things work when we go for the jog. Now I have searched around for some apps to help try and improve the camera, but it does seem to be the Helio P25 process. It does spoil the show a little. But again, if you're just gonna be in a more or less static location, video I think is perfectly acceptable. Okay, so let's try out the autofocus. Now you can see they're struggling to get a lock on that. If I push push the screen, and that does get the lock, but it does get there eventually. And you can see it does dig up some good detail. There's not a huge amount of depth of field to the image either you can see there. Will you let me know what you think of what the video looks like? video is for you guys benefit in case you're looking to buy this phone and use it for this kind of purpose uh, as I said you do get those optional color modes as well which I've shown you from the front facing camera so to save time on the video I won't double up on these here but that is the main rear camera video and how it all looks
So that's the end of the new mobile G3 Ultimate video test. It's not quite like the other videos where there's lots of other options to explore like 60 FPS or 4K, but I think for the many, the video is acceptable and does the job if you're just looking for a casual video which is more static than running around like an idiot like I've been throughout this video. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave those down in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you're new around here, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss more great content coming very, very soon, including more Ultimate video tests. But for now, though, this has been my Ultimate video test for the new mobile G3. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you guys later.